one of the most fascinating discussions I had was with the uh, chief medical doctor at Star City, which is the uh, equivalent to you know NASA's where they train the uh, cosmic our, our astronauts. And I asked the doctor, I said, you know, what is the big difference between the U.S. space program and the Soviet space program? And he said, well, in the U.S. you send your fittest people to space. In Russia, we send our brightest people to space. And he said the difference is actually Dr. Breckman's adaptogens have enabled us to qualify people that would otherwise not be able to endure, you know, space sickness and the, the gravitational issues and the stresses associated with space travel. Uh, and, and as a result, we're able to send our brightest people. Mm. You know, and, you know, so that was real testimony to the fact that how they were, you know, using these products to really give them an edge. Because in Russia, that's what they were, you know, they were at war with the West. And any, anything they could do that could demonstrate their superiority, whether it's the sports or the space race, that's where they put their money and, and their energy into. So the tests that went on, it was also interesting because in the far east of Russia, he said when I would uh, request for Moscow to send me lab animals, they would say, well, we can't send you lab animals, but you can use all the soldiers you want, which meant that uh, all of the studies that were done were done on humans. And and I'm talking about large-scale studies where they would take a auto plant in, uh, in a province and all the auto workers would be, in a sense, forced to include this supplement with the intention to see could it improve their productivity? Could it reduce the amount of illness? And, you know, so to have a study that was like 75,000 people over a three or four year period, it's just unheard of. And yet, that's the type of science that's really behind the ingredients that are used in our ionics and our uh, e-shots and so forth. So, great stuff. Uh, add liver water, please. Yes, thanks. Have America taken that on now? Have... Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's even in the sports world. When we first, uh, in fact, that was our original uh, motivation to to learn what the Thank you. Soviets were doing to uh, both condition their athlete, athletes and train them and so forth. And what we learned is that there wasn't a lot of difference in the actual physical training, but there was a big difference in restoration. So I think they were really ahead of us in terms of the techniques where, you know, athletes would would ice their bodies and and uh, they would use they would use as much were as rigorous about restorative aspects of training uh, as they were about the training itself. Mm. Because I think I remember talking to one of the doctors and and saying, well, you know, adaptogens are great, but you're you're dealing with world class athletes. And he said, you know, what people don't realize is world-class athletes are in a constant state of breakdown because they're pushing the envelope no matter what sport you're involved in. And so you need that edge. And that edge is how quickly can your body restore itself from the training that you're putting in in order to improve your performance. Mm. And that's where, again, we learned that of, of, of the work. Now, obviously, uh, in the Eastern Bloc countries, they didn't start, stop with natural substances. A lot of them were also using drugs, uh, you know, steroids and things of that nature. But as the world became more educated about it, what they recognized is, you know, we still need to find a way to give our athletes an edge that, uh, you know, is, isn't going to harm the athlete. And so, some of the some of the work that we had originally translated, I mean, it came out of you know, the Institute of Sport in Moscow with top secret on it because they they treated those as, as you know, proprietary secrets that were advancing, you know, their their system. So when we had an access to that, you know, it was, it was kind of a, a, a 
a very interesting time because it was like it was like the Wild West because you had people that had grown up in the system and they didn't understand capitalism because everything they they did was in, in reference to respond to the state and so even when we started to uh, develop relationships with the intention and we still source uh, many of our, our natural products from the Far East of Russia because that's where they grow, uh, that's where they're indigenous and but when we first started developing those relationships it was interesting because they had no concept of commerce they would say uh, as an example you know if there was a an herb like say ginseng that they would typically have produced and sold for let's say a dollar uh, and we said okay we will buy all the ginseng you're producing for a dollar and their question is well what are you going to sell it for well we're going to sell it for ten dollars well then we'll sell it to you for five <laughs> so it's kind of like they didn't they didn't recognize that there were actually costs associated with marketing and everything else that went along with it because they just didn't have a concept so uh, again it was, it was okay. and they're still they're still learning <laughs> although what we saw is is that uh, the military basically just changed changed uniforms and a lot of them became the Russian mafia right you know and, and uh, I mean I, we had a joint venture with a former admiral and he invited me to go fishing one day and showed up with this 300 foot, you know, Navy launch that he had commandeered for the weekend. <laughs> it was like, it was a bit crazy. So he's an oligarch now. I mean, it just. He's good. Well, yeah. I know. I know how to drink over there, that's for sure. <laughs> Better take responsibility for your own health because you can't rely on the government or other people to, to take care of it for you.